Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to week nine NECC Varsity League of Legends. We have Florida Tech Panthers versus Johnson and Wales University. And I'm joined here today with... Uh, hi, uh, I'm Juan, also known as Korn. Um, and yeah, I'm back. Yeah, he's back. It's kind of weird. The casters, like, we're going like it's on and off. It's just people having busy schedules. It is also at the end of, sem of the semester. Lots of, you know, projects and finals coming up as well. So it is understandable. But yeah, we already are into the draft here. Florida Tech banning away the Nila or Nyla. Wait, how do you pronounce it? Do you do Nila or Nyla? I pronounce it Nyla, but I think it's Nila. Okay, okay, yeah. Nyla or, yeah. Okay, we'll just go with Nyla then. That's how I pronounce it as well, honestly. Nyla being banned away. Lalo Day, who is, um, should we just, should we say JWD, JWU, or should we just say, like, or just call him Johnson in Wales? Uh, I think we can work with JWU. Yeah, okay. Well, it's kind of weird. JWU, like J triple U, pretty much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> J, J, JWU. Um, their EDC does play a lot of Nyla, and their jungler also plays an absurd amount of Ivern. And so, yeah, those are going to be banned away from JWU, along with the Echo. And against Florida Tech, JWU have banned away the Vex and the Syndra, uh, which are very high in priority for Fungus Dungus, their mid laner. And they're also banning away the Sijuani away from reset. So what do you think about Viego here, first picked? Oof, I think it's a very, really, really very first pick. Viego only works in certain types of compositions. Uh, you need to work around the jungle and try to get as much ganks as possible. Uh, you need to get that, that Viego in that sweet spot. Uh, where he can get all the skills, when he can get all the utility, and um, um, he can get that first item that is imp so important for him. And we see the, the Saya for the part of Florida Tech. Uh, let's remember, Saya, really strong pick, um, has a lot of um, a get out of jail cards with the ult, has mm -hmm. like the stun, and if you pair it with a Rakan, it's really, really, really strong. Yeah, I agree with that. Zaya, probably one of the highest priority EDCs to pick right now. And reset going again for the Xin Zhao, which we saw actually in the last series that you cost casted with me, Juan. The Xin Zhao that reset played two games in a row. Um, yeah. And he was looking good on it. It, so. was, it was an absolutely amazing yeah. game. Yeah. Oof, that's yeah. Xin Zhao. And now Varus being picked up. And Lalo Day does play a lot of Varus as well, along with the Nyla. And it's going to be the Thresh as well. Yeah, Thresh is a champion that Delo does play a lot of. So we're going to see that being picked up from him. And. The Brom maybe coming out here for Jono in the bot lane. Maybe he's not comfortable. The Zaya Rakan, you know, the Zaya Rakan lane is just so strong, especially with Rakan being like insanely good. He was buffed multiple times, but Jono just going to stick to the Brom. And I like it as well. It kind of prevents the poke Varus angle, um, just having that shield to block all the Varus damage. Yeah, and I think it's a good pick also the trash in the side of JWU. Um, mm -hmm. um, as we know, Barus is a really non-mobile champ. Um, it's really static. You don't have many ways to get out unless you have a flash, unless you have a your um, a, your um, what's the name of the summoners? The uh, old ghost cleanse. You, your the cleanse. Unless you have your cleanse, cleanse, unless you have the flash, it's really hard to get out of like some weird situations that Sai is gonna put you in. Uh, as well as that brown with the ult, uh, Thresh is a really good response. Uh, to the Sai and the Sin Sao, because you have the Lantern, uh, plus you have all that peel that Trish has with the E and the Q. Yeah, that is true. One thing I do hate when I play, like, champions that have to engage, I do hate Thresh, because that champion has so much, like, C or, like CC and peel and just survive offers a lot of survivability for their, for the enemy team's AD carry and carry. So now, Florida Tech, getting away the Swain, which, re it's Rewind Time, who is uh, JW's mid laner. He does play a lot of Echo, hence his name. And he plays a lot of Swain as well, so those were banned away from him. Malphite being banned away as well, with the Camille and Victor ban. So we've got three mid lane bans targeting Fungus Dungus here. And I mean, what can they, what 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 are Florida Tech going here? Maybe they leave their mid laner uh, for last pick here, and they pick something safe in the top lane. What is really available for Dipinator? What could he go for? A Fiora. Um, oh wait, maybe they. Oh wait, they're just gonna safely buy him. Okay. I was gonna say, Orianna is a safe pick. You have a lot of magic damage coming from Orianna. It's a good gank coming from Sin Sao, the Orianna ult, uh, the slow coming from the, the orb. Um, it's a really safe pick, but now the problem is that uh, it can get counter pick. And Orianna mm -hmm. getting counter pick with a Viego jungle on the other side, it's 
kind of hard to play against. Ooh, Vigar. I mean, it's just going to be a battle of luck. Like, Vigar kind of responds to Orianna in a way where they're both like these two mid lane picks here have a lot of control. And there's the Scion being picked up. Scion, one of the premium and best tanks in the game. We all have seen Scions get up to an absurd amount of HP with the W stacks. And if he chooses to go Heart Steel, but. I would like to see a Fiora. Right now, Fiora, Fiora seems really, really good. Uh, Fiora could oh. respond really well to Scion's tankiness. Oof. It's gonna be also okay. Divinator just going for the. I mean, it, it makes sense. You have an Oriana, right? And you have a Braum, which can both provide the uh, the CC needed for the Yasuo ult. But yeah, Fio I mean, that, that's why they banned away the Camille there. JW banning away the Camille, prepping the Scion pick. Um, because yeah, Camille into Scion is not very fun for Scion once Scion gets, or sorry, once Camille gets her Divine Sunder, it's just unplayable to be honest. But Yasuo for Divinator. We did see him on Yasuo as well, and he he's very good at the champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last time we saw him on Yasuo, he got a really good advantage in the top lane. He was getting some amazing plays. Uh, he had a 2v1 that mm -hmm. I honestly thought it, it was not going to be for him. Um, but at the end of the day, like... We we saw how he he managed to outplay like the enemy team and he got those two kills in top lane, which to be honest, I was completely impressed. But as you said, yeah, Oriana and Brown are gonna allow this Yasuo um, to get like those team fights that he wants uh, in the mid to late game. Um I am a little bit worried about that that Baker. He, he kind of takes away the mobility that Yasuo has when he has minions around, uh, with the cage. Um but at the end of the day, you know. Uh, if the Yasuo can get uh, those knockups, if uh, Oriana can get the knockups for Yasuo, it's kind of a GG fight, you know? Yeah, it is. Unless, the, unless I mean, like, I don't blame you. the one caveat here is, like, I think if Scion gets absurdly tanky, then what I mean, you have damage, but it has to be in the form of, like, I'm gonna expect the Leandre's Torment on the Oriana this game, especially if the Scion, I mean, okay. We expect it to be tank Scion, but it could also be full AD Scion, and you may think that's like that's like not 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 a possible right in competitive play. But in in some of these games that Four Tech have played back then, they've placed against AD Scions in the top lane, and yeah, it does decent. It does a lot of damage actually. Scion has pretty good AD scalings, but what do you think? Do you think that JW you you were mentioning that the Viego first pick you have to build a team comp around the Viego in order to get some resets? Do you think that? They've done that in this draft? Um, I think they did a good job uh, trying to get that mid lane uh, jungle duo. I don't think they're going to have uh, too much um, picks in the uh, late in the mid game, in the early game against that Yasuo. Just because the Yasuo has the mobility, Sion is a really, really, really static champ. And unless Diego gets a flank on Yasuo, it's going to be really, really hard to get that kill. Um, yeah, exactly. Now, when it comes to uh, your mid lane matchup, uh, Oriana Baker, it's really paired, but when you introduce a Viego in a 2v1 versus Oriana, uh, it's gonna be really, really hard for Oriana to get out of those fights, especially because they have the cage, plus Viego's turn, plus uh, all the damage coming from Baker, coming from Viego, and then Oriana has to really like outplay that. Uh, yeah. I think in a 2v2 matchup, um, Sin and Oriana may have an advantage uh, just because uh, Sin has the ability to, you know, uh, gap close. The gap mm. close that Sin can, can, can get is really, really important. And if Baker does not use uh, the cage uh, on, like, on its right time, um, Sin is basically going to be on top of him, like, half of the time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Viego has to actually, like, hit his stun. Which he has to charge up in order to get the gap closed. But as you mentioned, Xin Zhao can just if he I mean he doesn't even have to hit W on you, but you can just gap close. Now, once again, I think the battle of the jungle like Xin Zhao and Viego are both champions that can pressure pretty much all these lanes, I think, have kill potential. Especially like you have so much CC and set up from the Thresh and the bot lane for GWU. As you mentioned, you're just talking about the Vigar cages. Even Sion has set up as well in the top lane. So it's really like a triple threat here for the Viego. You can go to any lane and apply a lot of pressure. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. hundred percent agree. Uh, it's same. This thing, Sal and this Viego are gonna try to get a, as much of an advantage in the early game as possible because that's what it's gonna decide the game. The laning phases. 
we got a we got a winning laning phase in the bot lane for the side of a, for a tech. Uh, Barus and Trash are gonna try to play as passive as possible. They're gonna try to get the farm and they're gonna try to give as much items on Barus as possible. Beggar Oriana is there's not gonna be a lot of action in the one v one. You are gonna yeah. see those uh, skirmishes uh, when Viego and Sin get into the get into the fights. On the other hand, Sayun and Yasuo, that's going to be a, a fight like every two it's or three minutes. Bloody. Yes, yeah. it is going to be really, really bloody. Sayun wants to farm, Yasuo wants to get the early kills, wants to get that, that uh, lane advantage, even to rotate. If Sayun gets a rotation on Orianna, uh, like for, for the mid lane, uh, Orianna, uh, Orianna and Yasuo have a lot of kill potential. As you said, Orianna has the ult, Yasuo has the ult, Beggar is really an immobile champ, so they can get an easy kill there. Yeah, I agree with that. And, I mean... Yeah, if I, especially, I mean, it can go the other way as well. Like, if Sion roams down into the mid lane, if he, with his level 6, he gets, like, the little choo-choo train, he comes in. The Oriana is very the Oriana is very vulnerable as well, as you did mention. Lots of vulnerabilities in the mid lane that both, like, top sides of both teams can exploit. But, do you think... Uh, poke Varus or on-hit Varus this game? Because it's kind of... It's always a... a a question when you pick Varus because Varus can you can go like two you can go like two different two basically different type of styles on the champion you can go uh, like a more long range poke with a like lethality and arcane comet or you can go for an on hit lethal tempo type of build honestly it's kind of hard to tell for me which which one I would go this game um uh to be honest uh, this game every champ looks squishy uh yeah. you want to get those uh, those arrows on Saya and Oriana um, I honestly, I would choose the um, poke build. Uh, mm -hmm. It's easier to farm with the poke build, uh, especially when you get like uh, that that first rated. Uh, 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 that, that first, uh, yeah, that, when you get that first item, um, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a little bit of an advantage against Saya just because you have that extra damage from the lethality. Um, but we're gonna see that as Braum and Sing get more items. Um, uh, the poke build is gonna decay. Uh, mm -hmm. You're gonna still, yeah. you, you are gonna still get those kills on Saya and Oriana, but it's gonna be really, really hard to kill that Brown. Um, yeah, I, 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 agree I would with choose that. the poke build. To be honest, yeah. The thing, the one thing about poke build is that Varus, the poke build, you kind of you are using your ult a lot because you're building a lot of cooldown reduction, right? With mm -hmm. lethality inherently. The one thing that we that I just that I just saw actually with the Yasuo pick is that Yasuo is a really good his win wall is gonna be very, very insane in fights to block the Varus ult. Um because Varus ult is such a great tool at catching out champions or catching out players and starting up a fight. If the Yasuo is around, if Dip Vader is there and he can he can block that ult with his win wall, you know, it could potentially change the fight. Yeah, and I mean the Zaya just offers so much safety as well. Like that's why Zaya is just such one of like one of the best ADCs right now. It's just a, it's an absurd amount of damage if you get all your feathers down, and the safety that you have it with it as well with the feather storm is very 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 nice. But getting into the loading screen here finally after our little spectator delay and reset once again with the Hail of Blades on the Zinzao. <laughs> We did say this last time, but personally, I am a fan of Conquer or Lethal Tempo on the Xin Zhao. And I, I, me... I agree with you. I agree yeah. 100% with you. Um, but Ghost but on Scion. Ghost That's on Scion. No flash. And we see we see that Barris is not getting that uh, cleanse. Uh, we see him with the with the heal. Yeah. Uh, also, kind of brave. Blade. Kind of brave. Wait. The Varus started amplifying Caleb tone. Blades. Oh, he he's Caleb going Blades AP. He's gonna go AP. The the on hit AP build or the poke AP build though, because you could you could build a Nasher's Tooth and get mm -hmm. that on hit the same on hit effect but more in the AP side. So yeah. you you can also like abuse the um, the arrow, but uh, the enemy would build a uh, most commonly uh, armor or health. Uh, your arrow. When you're building full AP, deals a percentage damage. Yeah, so is it percentage HP? Percentage, percentage HP. Your... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's good. I mean, if he's going AP Varus, I mean, your only physical damage then at this point is going to be Viego. So you're going to have to play around this Viego and try to get him ahead 
I mean, the Vars is still gonna do. I mean, it's, I'm, it's interesting. I mean, you can go. It's Nashor's. I mean, yeah, Nashor's tooth first, but I, I, I can understand Nashor's tooth, but amplifying tone first. Not even like a long sword or a, like a long sword, like a Doran's blade or Doran's ring. Just I want the AP from from amplifying. Yeah, tone. exactly. Uh, I think the logic behind it uh, would be more of like a poke. Uh, the more poke he has, uh, the more he can abuse the lane. Mm -hmm. um, oof, I and mean, we see. Yeah, both junglers starting on the opposite sides of the map here. Fungus, Fungus. Trading a little bit onto the Vigar here. Rewind. Now, I like the little leash there that Jono gave reset. You know, he gave uh, an extra Q onto the Gromp, allowing get the Brom passive stacked. Allowing him to stun it and you know just helps out with your clear a little bit, but Sion starting Ruby Crystal as well. I find that interesting. I mean pretty unorthodox starts, but we can we'll see how it pans out. And in the bot lane here, Instinct and Jono have the level two advantage. And are beginning to Ooh, that's another Q landed there for Jono. Starting to poke out JWU's bot lane here, and Fungus Long is doing a ooh, as I'm saying that, here we go, Dello. Not much is going to come with this though, I think just a little bit of trading Delo just, you know, chunking out Jono actually quite a bit there to half HP. Fungus, this is the advantage of Orianna, like, you can stand in the wave here and do so much, like, just poke them. You have so much damage in your kit. Well, not damage, but not innate, just pure damage, but a lot of utility, and Orianna as well, her auto attacks do hurt a lot. Uh, <laughs> if you get auto attacked by Orianna a lot, she's going to do a lot of damage to you, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. It is gonna hurt. Plus, uh, I'm a bit surprised that you ran away with the arcane comment instead of a, um, mm -hmm. instead of um, fairy. No, a ooh. Ooh, face rush. Face rush. Face yeah, rush? and, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. get a kill from the Oriana. Yeah, and all that poking that Fungus Longus is doing on the Vigar. I mean, it's be one time he flashes away. Plus, I think he put down the cage there as well. But Fungus Longus flashes afterwards. And as, as as you saw there, the Oriana auto attacks do hurt. They hurt a lot. Um, Fungus Sung is finishing the kill up with some auto attacks, and he will gain an advantage in this lane. Gonna TP back in with the tier and the amplifying tone. So a good advantage coming from the from yeah. Fungus Sungus. Yeah, and look, Reset is looking for something here on Rewind. Rewind has to get this wave shoved in. I mean, the wave is not good for him. Oh, dip or Reset going, but in Rewind time is gonna barely be able to escape. No, he will not. Oh, he's actually gonna escape, actually. Yeah, and Reset just gonna protect Fungus Dungus. Hey, Scaly is running away. Can he maybe flash back in? Reset gonna land the W back onto Rewind time. Rewind time is gonna go down. Meanwhile, while Scaly flashes over and kills Fungus Dungus. Ooh, the flash hook from Thresh barely misses, but... Diego has a reset, maybe he can catch up with the Oriana movements. Meanwhile, Lilidae is gonna get punished here as his support is roaming. He's gonna get stunned up here, flashes away. The Zyre Root Feathers deal so much damage, and Lilidae is barely alive in the bot lane. Ah, uh, no wonder end, why Sai is such a priority pick. Yeah, yeah, that damage. Oof, that damage plus the sun, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's a lot of damage, and I mean, off of that, like, his Thresh. Just off of that roam has to reset now, and maybe Delo can make it back into la into lane in time before the wave crashes to help the Varus farm under the tower. But it looks like Floor Attack are not going to press the issue. They're just going to crash that wave and reset. I'll let the Varus farm under the tower by himself, but in the end, from that little skirmish in mid lane, both junglers getting themselves a kill. They got their resets up. Actually, wait, the Viego has not reset yet, so... Reset has a little bit of a tempo and item advantage here because the Viego is going to reset, has to reset soon. Um, and then he has to get back out onto the map with all that gold that he has yet to spend. That's a, a good, a good tip for the game, uh, for just in general for League is that you have, if you have a lot of gold in your inventory, you should probably spend it because you should always try to fight when you're at your strongest, right? And the strongest is when you have your and items. We see the ping so. stores immediately from the side of her attack. They want to get an advantage on that. Um, Bager, they want to kill him again and they have the opportunity. Oriana has been poking him. Uh, Bager is not farming, is not gaining some XP and we see the jungle support duo. Oh, we say here and Jono as well and yeah, the Vigar is just going to die. He has no TP as well, so they're going to shove out the wave and try to do as much as possible. But now, look, Instinct is getting caught up here. He has no flash. He's going to get a lot of movement speed and with the heal Jono flashing into s I mean I don't know if that was necessary but you know better safe than oh sorry better uh I don't know what the phrase is but Delo 
getting chased down here. Viego is also here in case Florida Tech pressed up too much, but better safe than sorry. I just remembered what it was, and yeah. As you mentioned, Lalo Day seems to be going for the natural suit. Oh, wait a minute. Reset going back onto the Thresh. Heal is dropped as well from the Varus to help him out. The Oriana ult is here as well, and it looks like he's Healy with no flash. We'll go down. Another Brom Q lands onto Lalo Day. Can Reset go in as well? He lands the W and the E to go in, and with the tower shots, Reset is going to go down. Can Delo do anything to Jono? No, Jono will just run away, and I mean, Reset has been doing a lot on the Xin Zhao. He's been at every single fight so far and just applying so much pressure. He's getting so much advantage for the mid lane, for the for the for the bot lane. Uh, he's doing an amazing job, and he is gaining on the tempo to the to the um, Viego. He has already his uh, two bucks. Uh, he has half of one item, uh, almost completed boots, and the uh, and a little bit of a disadvantage in the smite, but not too much. Yeah, and Viego. What do you think about Viego rushing rushing Bork? Personally, as Viego, I like to get I like to go mythic first. After the Bork, uh, or after Blade of the Rune King got nerfed, yeah, um, but... it, it was a it was a viable it was a viable uh, route to go first Bork, especially because of the damage that the Bork used to give you, uh, especially like yeah. all that percentage damage and plus the ability to like get all that um, attack speed. Uh, now, I don't think it's a good option. I agree with you. Um, I like the Divine Thunder Viego build, uh, just mm -hmm. because you have that extra tankiness plus the damage no. and you know the sustain. Uh, I don't know how you build it though. You can go Kraken Slayer first. Kraken Slayer first into Black Cleaver feels really good. Especially, I think the recent Viego buffs, like a couple patches ago, were uh, crit changes or like something about crit in his Q. So that's why I prefer the Kraken Slayer build. But I don't know if you saw that, but the Scion is chunking Dipinator in the top lane here. Those combos dealing a lot of damage. And Dipinator trying to heal up on the Krugs uh, with the Vampiric Scepter. Maybe they can look for a gank here. Yep, the Thresh Lantern over the wall. The Diego has flash if he chooses anything. Jono just standing there. He's gonna get stunned up. Jono, he has no sums. It looks like Jono might just sacrifice it. Like, ooh, the Thresh play right as Jono tries to jump away to his teammate. Good play there from Delo and a great setup from GW's bot lane. Gets them a kill. And we hear we hear the, the train coming from Sion going to lane. Uh, <laughs> Choosing, choosing, um, just to get that ultimate to not lose the minions, uh, probably push a little bit more. Let's remember, Sayo has a uh, Yasuo hasn't um, get that pushed, uh, so he's gonna back right now, and Sayo is probably have the advantage on the tempo in the top lane. Yeah, look how much HP Sayo already has at nine minutes. That is a very, very large HP bar. Looks like, oh yeah, I mean, his reset got back, so reset is here too. Try to get the wave shoved in in order to let his Yasuo reset here. And we saw a trade of objectives there, so in the bot side, HG is going to pick up the Mountain Dragon for his team as Reset got the Herald in the top lane. Ooh, okay, Scion almost. If Scion stopped the back there, that could have been Devastating not so for good. Yasuo. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, Fung oh, in the mid lane here, Fungus Fungus. Just going to trade a bit against the Vigar here. And the Vigar, I mean, in. Yeah, he's gonna need his jungler to help him out a bit. I mean, he has had a very unfortunate early game. Florida Tech have been have had their uh, their scope and their eyes on the mid lane. So, yeah, it's rewind time. It's gonna building towards the Rod of Ages, I think, with those items. Or, yeah, wait. yeah. Uh, I think right now it's a really good viable uh, build yeah. uh, for Baker. Um, just because it gives you all that sustain, plus Baker doesn't need that much AP in the early game uh, because you build with HP with your passive. Yeah, he's flashing away here from Fungus Lungus. Fungus Lungus has flash. He's gonna go afterwards and he almost gets full cool, cool, but the level up at the last second saved him. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Delo, he's gonna hook up Zaya. Instinct is gonna go down and two ganks in a row from H. Gailey is gonna start the snowball in the bot lane. I mean, one kill on Jono and one kill on Instinct here, but. Fungus Thung is a solo kill in the mid lane, and he has a very, very commanding lead here on the Orianna. He is going to be very, very, very scary. It's it's kind of hard to play to play um, right now uh, against uh, a Diego with that much advantage, uh, being dealing, dealing that much damage, uh, having a lot of um, um oh. Reset. I mean, reset is just. Okay, he misses the W, but 
Oh, that was so close, but I mean, yeah, as you were saying, you've seen like Diego, yeah, Diego has, I mean, he has a lead, but not as much a lead as Reset does. Reset is very, very strong on the Xin Zhao here. And yeah, the Varus just completed the National Shooting Wheel. Fungus Dong, guess he is locked inside the cage here. The Viego has flash. Can you look for the flash W? No, he's just gonna land it instantly. Remember, there is no Vigar ult, so there's no follow-up damage. There's nothing you can do. Fungus Dongus is on the run. He's gonna slow down the Viego. He's doing so much damage. Viego flashing back into the Viego have ult. No, but it's the Vigar Q. I'll shut him down, but looks like JW's jungler and Millionaire are trapped here. Nope, the Viego has another reset to get out. Rewind time. It looks like unfortunately he will probably go down here as well with no flash, and it's gonna be reset and Dipinator to take him down. Good uh, for it, really. really good for Reset to give that, to donate that kill to Dipinator. Uh, he mm -hmm. right now needs as much advantage as possible to try to deal with the Scion and the tankiness. Look at the Scion, he already has the hard steel. Yeah. The, 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 all the health that he had was just on the stats of the item. Now, his health is gonna grow exponentially for every uh, 1v1 that he has. Yeah. Um, each fight is gonna be more health for him. Uh, it's gonna be really hard for the ass until he gets a, his item. Um, and wait, wait, right Jono here is being caught out here. He's hooked over by the uh, Thrash and Dello. He's gonna take him down. Oh, flash away from the hook there, and a good look there from Dello with all that vision that they have. And Mio Fungus Dungus, he is level 10, chasing down GW's bot lane. Dipnator wind walling away the Scion slow. And I mean, this Varus, this Varus has the potential to deal, deal a lot of damage if he lands. I mean, while speaking of landing, this Oriana, so much damage in the mid lane, landing all of her spells here. Reset is here as well. Remember, Vigo has no flash, so can't really do much. Look at the Oriana Look at the damage. Look the from the Oriana! It's so much damage, yes. It's such an it's annoying champion when it's so, when an Oriana gets ahead, it's super annoying to play against because she has so much range, so much utility, and obviously when she's ahead, she has a lot of damage as well, and... Reset with the Herald dropping it in the mid lane. Gonna be giving even more gold over to Fungus Dungus, who is already doing so well in this lane. And I mean, I like I like how HCKLE has approached, you know, trying to help out his mid laner. He did gank, he did punish Fungus Dungus for having no flash, but in the end, even though he ganked and got the kill, rewind time did end up dying in that little skirmish. But if I'm the Viego here, I'm looking to play around this Varus. You have so much setup in this bot lane as well. The Varus, Thresh, lots of CC and lockdown potential, so... Especially with uh, this dragon coming up, there's gonna be maybe a fight. Be a fight around here. I completely agree, to be honest. Uh, Oriana is now a pain uh, for for the for JWU team. Uh, if they don't have control over her, uh, the damage that we said from the Yasuo-Oriana combo is not gonna come from Yasuo, it's gonna come from all from Oriana, and then Yasuo is just gonna execute. Um, the Oriana right now with the Sorcerer's Boots, it's gonna hit it really, really strong. Plus, it has basically yeah. all all the all the components uh, to make the um, Luden's echo. Um, it's it's gonna be really, really, really hard to deal with her, especially when you are playing with a really, really squishy champs like Diego and uh, Baker. And Diego doesn't even have his tanky item. Uh, doesn't even have like a um, a black cleaver. Oh, yeah. to, to yeah. Give him that like extra tank in that. Well, uh, there's a fight here. The Varus ult lands onto Instinct. Instinct is chunked down so low, but the Viego is by himself. Even with the Lantern, he's gonna go down. Dipnator, I think, TP didn't hear it. He's gonna ignite it. Fungus Dongus is gonna use the Command Shock Wave, and Dipnator flashing away. And the Primordial Burst from Vigar is blocked by the Shield Bolt. Still goes down as well. Hook lands onto Fungus Dongus. There is no more follow up from Varus. And in the end, Florida Tech, I mean, they're gonna get the Viego kill, they're gonna get the Dragon, and that's just another massive win for them on the map. And Dipinator gets to survive things, thanks to the shield bow. Mm -hmm. uh, if it wasn't for the shield bow, that bigger old would have absolutely kill him. Um, yeah. That 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 uh, fight, uh, the ability of Dipinator to like realize that he can fight and he can engage um, with the shield bow is really really amazing. Um, it, also like um, evading uh, all the initial engage coming from uh, a JW with the. With the wind wall, uh, trying to get like a small advantage to then um, ra uh, finally run away, you know? Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. I mean, that was just really well played. The uh, Viego was caught by himself, and even like the Thresh Lantern from Delo, it was not in time. Or, I mean, Floor Tech just followed up really well, and Dipnator, his TP was there just in case something went wrong, but 
Yeah, and I saw you saw their I don't see if you saw Instinct's HP after he got Varus ulted and the Varus ult absolutely oh, sorry, the Varus Q follow-up. Pretty much almost one shot him, yeah, it was so much damage. It's, it's really really hard right now to play for him. Um especially for him and Oriana. It's Yeah, meanwhile Diffinator, oh another maybe a 1v2 in the top lane is here. I mean he's weaving in and out of the wave onto the Diego and Ace Calzi will go down to a reset. Meanwhile, Diffinator is oh. just is he, he's just the king of one versus two. He's just honestly. the king like, of one versus two. Uh, his ability to, to play those uh, 1v1s and uh, kind of isolate the fights before engaging uh, really, really well. As you saw, he rushes into getting as much damage into Viego as possible for uh, then getting that one final 1v1 where Reset just gets in uh, and takes the kill. Um, Deepinator. All that mobility that Yasu ha that Yasu has, Deepinator uses basically for his favor, and uh, all the abilities from uh, Sion were not able to hit him. Yeah, and I mean, the thing about that is that Sion doesn't really have that much like innate damage to follow up on the Viego, and Deepinator just is has he just has the item, he just has the shield bow and the Berserker Greaves, and he fully stacked up his lethal tempo there as well. And when you have a fully stacked lethal tempo. Especially on the Yasuo, it is uh, unfavorable to fight him, you could say, but that was really well played there from Divinator and Reset coming in as well, swooping in, securing the kill onto Scalzi. And Divinator as well, oh sorry, uh, Reset grabbing the second Herald of the game. Gonna maybe try to break, I mean, usually with Herald you try to break the mid tower. The mid tower is very, very nice to break as it opens up so much more of the map. And look at the map. We see Sion coming down, trying to get the, the probably that gank into the into the bowling for for attack. Oh, Fungus Fungus here. He's stunned up. And oh, that is a lot of Vigor damage on the Fungus Fungus. Either while in the meanwhile, sorry, in the main, Jonah blocking up so much. But Della will grab the Storm Gem. Instinct as well was using the Thunder Storm to get away from the Sion. Ult. Dipnator going in. Minister to the kill and Thresh, but Full Attack are forced to disengage. Another tornado lands on Dipnator. What can he do? He has the lethal tempo, but. I mean, yeah, there's not much gonna, more going to come up off this fight mid lane, but you saw in the ball lane there, I mean, Fungus Longus was trying to fight the Vigar and Rewind Time just dealt a lot of damage with the Vigar ult there. That was an uh, Vigar amount. ult is unfair. It's really unfair. <laughs> you can go behind it, you just need to hit those minions, and he's, he's really um, equal in farm to, to yeah. Fungus Longus. So all the stacks are there. The only thing that has happened are the kills. Oh, so Diffinator chasing after him. Diego is here though. Can Diffinator do anything about the Fungus dodging in and out of the wind wall to avoid the stun? Meanwhile, Fungus Fungus is here with the Oriana utility. Delo maybe can help him out here. Gonna go back in with the last breath onto Delo. Delo forced to flash away. Sion is here as well. In the mid lane reset. Probably looking to drop the Herald here. Get some gold onto his ADC, but yeah, House Galaxy once again helping out his mid laner. Or not his mid laner, well, I mean. He's trying to help out the bot side there and he gets caught out. And Delo actually finding Jono in the jungle. He's gonna live. Fungus Dungus. Trying to crack this bot tier 1. If he's able to crack this bot tier 1, it'll be a lot of gold for himself. And Diplator's gonna TP to this actually. Maybe they can look to that the Scion. Look, two more floor tech members are coming here. The Command Shockwave coming out a bit early. Jonel's gonna land the stun on, or sorry, the, uh, the passive onto it. And the Scion train's coming in, but there's nothing he can do. Fungus Dungus grabs the tower. And Scion will die, but you know, he's gonna get the wave though. It's a good death. Good death. Yeah, but and really well played from Deepinator covering that Scion all so he cannot mm -hmm. escape. Um, plus, uh, they, they they were able to manage uh, the, the, turret, the turret aggro really, really well when they started the, the fight. Because uh, it basically was a turret dive against a Scion, which usually is not recommended. Scions versus turret ganks, uh, turret uh, dives. You have a really yeah. tanky champ, and you're trying to dive him. It's not gonna end up well, but it's not gonna end up well. well. Dello can get caught in his own jungle here. Flora Tech, this is what I like to see. They're moving as a unit with all of the champions together. You know, just moving as a unit. They're catching out members of JWU and getting these kills, but... I mean, to be honest, you say that was a tower dive, but like, the tower was 1 HP. I think Fung Slungus was prioritizing hitting the tower. But in general, yeah, it's not very advisable to dive a Scion. And meanwhile, ooh, another Braum passive landed on to the Varus. The, the Scion, he was there to stop. And we're following up, but yeah, Floratech 
That was a good dive onto the ball and killing the sign. And wait a minute, there are just two, two men starting Baron. Scalzi and HP Wine Time are doing Baron. Scalzi is very low already. He's forced to get a gum away. The Vigar is trying to do something. I mean, can the Vigar finish it off? No, the Baron's half HP. It, it's impossible. It's impossible, right? Yeah, no, Rewind's gonna. Wait. They're trying to get. They're trying to get some more HP from the fruits, but I mean. I mean, okay, honestly, the attempt is respectable, seeing that, like, they saw that four members of Florida Tech are bot side. And they, at this point, see that they're so far behind in gold here, they have to go for something. Try to get something, like, try to get, basically just try to get on the board, get something going for them. They try up the Baron, and it's just not enough DPS, especially since the Diego is relatively behind. He only has the Blade of the Ruin King uh, completed, and I think he's building towards what seems to be Shield Bow with those other Yeah, components. I think it's a sh he's either... Yeah, it has to be a shield bow. It has to be a shield bow. Uh, uh, as you said, it, Diego doesn't have his second item. I would have, I would have believed that Diego and Baker would have done um, the 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 Baron if at least Diego had a second item or Baker had like also a second item. Uh, mm -hmm. But they are not able. They don't, they don't have the tankiness. Diego don't have doesn't have that that the extra sustain that shield bow provides. And they they were trying to go for a miracle play, but. Yeah, meanwhile, there's gonna probably be a team fight here that breaks out. It seems to be five members of each side grouping around here. The sound cue, maybe out of vision. It's gonna lay onto the Zaya, but there's no follow up. Meanwhile, Jono gonna get sent up. The cape is down, Delo. Taking a lot of damage. The bars are over the wall, gonna knock up Risa. Risa going down. Two man shockwave into the last breath. Diffinator, a Zalzi going down. Maybe he's actually living a one HP. Diffinator gonna grab the kill onto him. Meanwhile, Jono is forced to flash away. Reset going back in onto the bars. Can bars live? New no instinct flashing over the wall with the Gale Force. Featherstorm going down. He's gonna stun up the Vigor. Gets a double kill. The Scion with no flash is gonna go down as well. And it's a triple kill for instinct and for the tech. With an almost clean ace, I mean, Viego is very low HP, and they're gonna grab the Baron for themselves and just absolutely explode the gold lead, and they were already in control of this game by a lot, but now they are, like, giga in control of this game. Wow, what a team fight from the side of Florida Tech. Um, really, well, really well executed from the part of the Oriana, uh, manages to catch uh, those... Um, those two in in the entrance to the jungle. You don't wanna you don't wanna fight an or, an Oriana in, in, in jungle entrances. You know you you need yeah. you need more space. You need to fight it in, in lane. You need to fight it in uh, in the river. But you don't wanna uh, fight an Oriana in a really really tight spot. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you fight that Oriana, you basically lose. Uh, she has all the utility to get all the damage on top of you. Plus, uh, as soon as she, uh, she R's. Uh, the, the ultimate uh, 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 allows Yasuo uh, to get the the the, uh, the last so good, and we are now have a team fight in mid lane. Don't know. Yeah, he's gonna get brought down here from thanks to the tower reset as well. Maybe Lord Attack getting a little bit you know caught off guard here. Reset. Oh, the Vigar ult is blocked by the Zintao ult, but another cage will spell is doing the shutdown. Going over to Vigar is huge. So much more gold given to this Vigar here, who has completed his second item. Well, not technically, he has to finish like the stacking up tier, right? But he does have the item in terms of gold cost. Meanwhile, Fungus Dungus gonna drop the ult here onto the mid lane. They're just trying to defend here. And now Florida Tech, two of their members without Baron now. That's gonna, you know, punish a bit of their seizing or their sieging ability. It's gonna not allow them to siege as much. Meanwhile, Delo. That's the problem with the, like that's you saw the Oriana right there. I mean, you try to walk up against her, she just has so much range, she just poke you down. And then when she finally wants to pull the trigger, she pops her R with the Yasuo follow-up. I think right oh. now for attack should should start looking for a um, should, should start looking for a one through one. Try to spread that Baron uh, all around the map, trying to get as much advantages, trying to get the pushes from, from two different lanes. But we get another team fight. The Vader going down as well, and Fungus Fungus is stunned up from the Vigor Cage. H Zalzi has a reset. Instinct is gonna die as well. H Zalzi getting himself. Two kills, Exalzi. Oh, he's gonna go back onto Fungus Longus here, but the, uh, sorry, the Seraph's Embrace Shield is gonna save Fungus Longus. Jono making sure that his Millionaire does not die there. And it's just super scrappy. Brawl's going back and forth. Both teams just fighting in the mid lane. Yeah, and uh, now it, this allows the kill on the Viego allows Flora Tech to get this this Drake basically for free. But do we see a TP to the back of Flora Tech for Cyan? Yeah, Cyan coming in. Oh, Fungus Longus brilliantly. Gonna go for the Vigar here. I mean, Scion is just in here. He is not 
Yeah, I mean, he is very, very tanky, and he's starting to kill Jono. Jono is going to run away. But the good thing about this is that Reset does have the Black Cleaver, so he's going to be shredding away the Scion's armor. And Scion always oh, going to be able to get away with the Thresh Lancer. Dip Meter is there, but the Vigar Cage is going to stop him from pressing forward. And as you saw there in that fight, the Vigar was not allowed to enter. Fungus Fungus was kind of hovering around the I'm top side. I'm going to take a little bit of overextending the fight. They're trying to get those peaks, knowing that... They, that uh... J JW has really, really low health, but... Yeah. Maybe they can look for something. Varus is walking up a very, very far. The rest of them... Oh, the Varus arc goes a little bit wide there of Dipinator. And... Yeah, in the end, Florida Tech, they are on Soul Point now, and Hextech Soul is nothing to laugh at as well, it is. Especially when you have a Yasuo on your team. Yeah, uh, yeah. That yeah. attack speed that gives you, like, just having the Hextech Dragons. Yep. It's really, really nice. Well, Yep, it's really nice for him. And the thing about Scion was that he is tanky, but we did mention the Black Cleaver on the Xin Zhao. He's gonna be able to take down him, uh, take down his armor, but he has no magic resistance, so Fungus Dungus is gonna be doing lots of damage to him. And he also has 434 hard steel stacks. Or not sta not 434 stacks, but that's how much he's gained from his stacks. Um, yeah. Which but a, a little bit surprised that Oriana went from a loot and second instead of going, going a, yeah. you know. The Andres, yeah, and rewind time, yeah, and I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. Rewind time, he gets locked up, and Reset looking for something here. He's looking for a fight against the Diego. Diego actually doing a lot of damage, but Reset has so much survivability. He's very tanky with that Gorge Drinker and the HP provided from his items, and the Rush Lantern is what saves him. Now the Diego with the shield bow and the Borg. Yeah. Doing a lot, a lot of damage to reset. He yeah, was able to, he was able to get like the best of Diego, but at the at, at the end of the day, almost get gets killed. Yeah, reset. Actually, I was surprised that Diego damage was pretty insane. There, reset took a lot of damage from the Diego combo, and now it's five members for the tech here. I grouped up in the mid lane. The hook lands onto Jono. Jono is gonna put down the shield. The Varus bolt goes down as well. Jono is gonna block up all the damage. Drops down the glacial fissure. And Jono, oh, Reset going to flash in onto the Diego. Diego gonna go down as well. Reset is gonna maybe die. He will drop, he will drop in the end. Bello Day trying to kite here, instant flashing it back over the wall. Thresh is one HP, Featherstorm going down. Fungus Dungus, Banshee's Veil is procced. The Scion ult, Choo Choo Train is coming in. Dip Vader dodges it. Will that be it? Oh, oh. It's all it's going all over the Scions in the background here, and Dip Vader is just going down like the Scion, I mean. Yeah, Scion it's is tanky, it's a kill but... It's really hard, it's really hard for Scion to kill, him, to kill him, but Fungus Dingus deals a lot of damage! Yeah, oh he misses that last command attack there, but in the end, yeah, he's gonna go down. And, I mean, Divinator by himself is... Well, he was in the back lane there, he did land another tornado, and was able to ult off of it, and it's sort of just like a... It's sort of like a split fight. Divinator in the back lane versus GWU and Scion by himself. <laughs> He managed, to get, he managed to get the best of um, JWU getting that kill uh, in front of yeah. Baker and then Baker barely escaping alive. Uh, Deep in air doing an amazing job to separating the, the team fight, as you said. Uh, mm -hmm. You separate the team fight, you let you let this Saya, uh, you let um, Instinct, you let Fungus Dungus uh, alone dealing all the damage, and the, the TF go, the, the team fight goes to Flare Attack. Yeah, it does, and. Is Diego now building towards the TCP Infinity Edge? Which is very surprising. He's very brave anything. also. You're not yeah, gonna have like any it. tankiness. Very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lone Tech could get the Baron for themselves and... Maybe this time they'll try to end the game. Oh, he's gonna land a Shockwave and Dipnator with the follow-up. That's that combo. It's so... I mean, it's not as reliable as something like a... A Malphite or like, you know, the other types of things that you want to pair with Yasuo, like a Gragas. But Oriana ults, the Command Shockwave has a very large radius in it. We've seen multiple times now that if, when Fungus Dungus lands the ult, Dipnator is there to follow up, and it is the person who gets hit is pretty much dead. There's nothing that they can really do about it. And Dipnator also very strong, three completed items, level 16 on the Yasuo. Fungus Dungus also level 17. And he's building towards a Void Staff next as well, so he's gonna have a lot of damage. Uh, a little bit surprised he didn't go for the um, uh, for the. Uh... For, for the two incredible, incredible la large rods uh, before. Oh, yeah. uh, 
they, 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 they don't have that out. much magic resist uh, in mm -hmm. the side of um, JW. We don't see that much magic resist from Zion. We don't see that much that much magic resist for like basically anybody. The only the only champ that actually has it is Fresh, and Oriana does not want to focus Fresh. Yeah, and as you're saying there, I mean, as you're talking rewind time, he got caught out there in the river. Floratex setting a little trap there as three, and Risa and Jonah are just running into JWU. Risa is so tanky. Fungus Fungus here is here to support as well, and the Varus, yeah, he has with no sums. Reset will take him down in the top lane. <laughs> Dipnator just hitting the tower as Scion hits in. Gonna go back onto him, dashing into him. Has the tornado up. Oh, the Scion ult brilliantly used as well to get the, uh, the CC immunity. Dodged the uh, Yasuo in. Oh, Dipnator going back and dodge in and out. The Oriana ult was so close to allowing Dipnator. Oh, Dipnator did ult actually, but the, it was not enough. And Scalzi gets the reset onto him. Scalzi maybe going back in here. He doesn't have the reset. He's taking so much damage though. We're gonna use the Heartbreaker to go back in. Jono and Fungus Fungus trying to cut out the Scion, cut out the Scion passive. But Instinct as well. Shoved in the bot wave. So we're gonna grab the spot inhib. Mid inhib is already taken. And Florida Tech with this Hex Tech Soul and the Baron are looking to end this game with a 12,000 gold lead. So they're gonna go for the triple inhib. No, gotta be. Yeah, gotta, gotta go for a triple inhib. Yeah. I mean, I think. Are they gonna. Are they gonna reset or are they gonna end the game? They're gonna I think back they away. just wanna back away, reset, uh, don't overextend that much. They have the Hexic Soul, so mm -hmm. they don't have like uh, any reason to fight right now. Yeah. Uh, if I take one wants to play safe, they can wait until um, uh, the Elder. Elder Dragon. Yeah. Also, but Fungus Longus is kind of low on, on mana, so maybe he wants to get a reset off. And maybe Forward Tech looking to group as five and just try to get a clean team fight to end the game. Dipnator with four completed items, I mean. Yeah, Fungus Longus as well picking up the Void Staff. Oof. Everyone the Void on Florida Tech is so strong right now. Right now we're gonna see uh, Fungus Dungus dealing all that damage. It's gonna basically shred through the magic, the basic magic resist that each each champ has. Um, it's gonna be hard for the, for the for JW to survive right now. Um, yeah. Deepinator is basically gonna gonna leave them like 10 HP, and then uh, and then Fungus Dungus can get in with the old. Yep. Scion. Like, one Yasuo Q is. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gonna hurt a lot. Yeah, this might be the final team fight here. Reset. On the other side, meanwhile, just Rodello just gets completely one shot by the Funk, by the Boyana R. And Reset just goes in on Taurus, just kills him with the grand challenge. Reset tanking up the tower. Scion is trying to do so much for his team. He can get so much damage to get until the Scion passive is here. Reset gets his mall frocked. And on the other side of the fight, Fungus Fungus takes down the Viego. It's up to Thresh. Oh, that's the answer. And uh, Jonah oh. says a reason. Yeah. And in the end, I think Floor Tech, with a very strong and dominant performance in this game one, very well played from them. In the end, a 14,000 gold lead. They will grab game one. And honestly, I like their draft. I like how they played. You know, very solid from Floor Tech in this game one. Really, really good. And as as we said at the beginning of the game, um, the winner was the one who played for mid lane. Uh, we mm -hmm. saw Reset going back and again, getting that, those skills uh, on its rewind time. Fungus Dungus getting all that advantage in the mid lane, even though even though they were like uh, equal in farm. Um, Fungus Dungus ha had the tempo advantage. It, he was first in rotations. Uh, he was getting all those skills on the beggar. It was really, really good from him. Yeah, and we'll see how JW bounces back in Game 2 here, but we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere because Game 2 is uh, coming up.
Welcome back, everyone. NECC Week 9, Florida Tech versus Johnson and Wales University, JWU here. Florida Tech, now on the blue side. They took a very commanding Game 1. And now, it seems as if the exact same bands were coming out, honestly. Yeah, exact same bands as the first draft here. Banning uh, away. Yeah. A bit, a bit weird that we didn't see that ban on Oriana, to be honest, instead of the Syndra. Uh, we are going to see the ban on the Saya, though. Um, yeah. I like I that. I know, for it take as the first pick. Are they going to contest? Probably the Syndra, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just been too good. In the hands of Reset. So much strength in the early game and mid game. Zinjao provides. He is very, very good at skirmishing. The and, super ability yeah. that he has, all the sustain that he has, plus mm -hmm. when you're building the blood tercer, the blood tercer, the, the, the gore drinker. Um, yeah. It's it's really, really good. Uh, the engage that he has, especially with the champs that Fungus Angus plays, uh, they are able to dominate the mid lane uh, with that uh, mid jungle duo. Yeah. What Let's does JDB go for here? Uh, they could go for strong AD. I mean, they saw the, the Varus in the last game. Do they want that, Do they want to run that back? They're going to go Sejuani, though, in the jungle. Or it could be Sejuani top. Um, but... I, I think the jungle would be better, just because mm -hmm. it gives you um, that a gun set up, gank setup that probably any... Uh, 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 a, a, a magic, a magic a mid laner would, would like. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's gonna be on the top lane because they know that Yasuo can be picked, and Yasuo can deal a lot of damage to Sejuani, especially because of how mobility he has. Uh, yeah. Sejuani does manage to to take him away some of the mobility with the with the passive plus the E plus the ult, but at the same time, is a Yasuo is a Yasuo, you know? Yeah. And now we have Samira coming in. That is very, very interesting. Samira for JW here. And I mean, you have to pair it with some CC. You got to go for like, I mean, I would not be surprised if I saw the Nautilus here. And Jono looking to run it back on the Braum. He played it very well on the Braum last game. Was able to save his teammates. And the shield was very, very useful. And it's going to be Kaisa for instinct, which is a... Ch I mean, Kaisa has, you know, been... Not too much of a meta pick right now, but you know, what else, what other really champions can you go? I mean, Kaisa, like, you go like Tristana. Uh, I you wanna, don't know. I'll probably pick a Caitlyn against the Samira. Caitlyn has the range advantage, plus, um, True. with with the Brown, or you can pair it with a Morgana or with a Lux. They they are really good uh, duo bot lane. Um, yeah. Kaisa. As you said, Kaisa has has not been a, a really like um, contested pick, uh, especially yeah. because uh, you, all the nerves um, that that she had like lately. Um, mm -hmm. But but it is still strong, you know, dealing with like champions like Sejuani, Kaisa is able to kite. Uh, Nautilus is gonna cut a lot of that mobility that Kaisa has with the passive and plus the Q. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but that's what Braum is there for, you know. Braum yeah. Kaisa wants a support that can cover for him, if cover for her. Um, but at the same time, uh, Braum is gonna roam a lot. We yeah. see, we saw this Braum uh, from the side of her attack. Uh, Jono wanted to like be in mid lane, be in, uh, be, get get all those fights in the river, uh, give that uh, like his mid lane like as much advantage as possible. Uh, this Kaisa could survive lane if. Yeah, Nautilus does not get the best of her, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I think something that we should notice about Braum is that Braum wants you to engage on him. Because Braum, when you engage on him, he just gets free passive stacks and the stun is super, super deadly, right? So if Nautilus cues it onto Braum, you know, Braum has that shield to block anything else. And then the Kai'Sa with the Braum can do a lot of damage if they get it off now. I think, yeah, there's the Orianna band that you were talking about. Um from the side of JWU, gonna take that away from Fungus Dungus. Also gonna gr take away the Camille from Dipinator. And I think this, they, Floor Tech, basically have <laughs> banned the same exact changes that they did in game one. The Swain being taken away from Rewind Time and the Malphite as well now. What will they go for here? And it's gonna be an Olaf, so it's gonna be an Olaf top. Now, Olaf is very niche, but I think, didn't he get 
I forgot when he got nerfed. I think he got no, no, no. He got nerfed last patch or like a two yeah. patches ago because it was a really well contested peak in like pro play. Uh, just yeah. because he has so much sustain, he has so much damage. The resets on the Q when he picks up the the axe again. Um, and we see the Fiora. I wanted to see the Fiora last game. I really needed to see that Fiora against the Scion. Let's remember, Fiora deals a lot of true damage. So the Scion against the Fiora was gonna be devastating. I now we see yeah. DP Nader picking that. Beautiful, beautiful champ. Uh, yeah, a little bit unfair. It's also to be very honest. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, Fiora has been super strong. Where I mean, Fiora just in lane is just so good, and she can absolutely take lots of tower planes as well with her Q. Where Fiora kind of falls off though is in those team fights. If she's not able to clean up or get a clean flank off, you know, she kind of just watches her team die. But the Anivia blind pick for Florida Tech. Oof. And. Uh, Nivea is a champion you don't see often, but when you see it, it's it is either success or, or failure. absolute failure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing about the Fiora. The Fiora, as you said, a really good duelist, but it stays there. It's a really, really Ooh, good duelist. The Silas. He has a lot of good ults. Bram ult, Kaisa. Kaisa's a gap close, a Anivia's. Uh, ult is kind of work for him. Fiora mm -hmm. and Braum, Fiora and Sing is not going to be that much, except for the survivability that he has with Sing's house ult. Um, but Silas is... Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think you're picking Silas here because Sejuani is a champion. The way her passive works to get her, like, her stacks off to stun is you need a melee champion to hit mm -hmm. it. So you have a lot of 2v2 potential here with the Silas, Sejuani, and... So much brawling potential. The Sejuani and the Silas just set up each other perfectly. And they have so much damage built into the kits. You also have an Olaf. And you also have a Nautilus. And also Samira as well who has a melee attack. Well, it's when she's in melee range she uses like her melee attack, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, lots of uh, lots of good champions for Sejuani. Lots of good, now, good think, champions. Yeah. But the thing, the problem is that uh, for Floretic right now, Anivia, uh, She's yeah. gonna get gap close, but uh, by Silas E, by Silas A, um, W, and it's a Johnny's like engage ability. It's gonna be really, really hard for Fungus Angus to play that lane if uh, we see that Johnny coming again and again and again from the river or yeah. from the flank. Now, I think what the Anivia is doing, this might just, I might be overthinking this, but I think Anivia was picked for, like, for the Olaf. Now, the reason why Olaf is like super and like basically unstoppable is, well, because he literally can. He, when he when he presses ult, he literally does not get affected by CC. So, what's the only other way you can stop him? Well, you can try to kill him. Well, the issue is Olaf is unkillable. Um, so, uh, what else can you really do? Well, I think the Anivia wall uh, is going to potentially help Florida Tech inside team fights to, you know, get that Olaf away from them. And you are right, though. The Anivia is very, very susceptible, especially in the early game with this Silas and this Juani. Now, the thing about the Silas, though, is we're talking about like these ults you grab like Kaisa, but honestly, like the only I think really good ult that you can really get is the Zinzao ults, and then other than that, is they're kind of like okay. I I really like the gap the gap close that um Kaisa's ult is gonna provide it just because you have yeah. the Sejuani. Silas wants to fight like in really close range because of like the sustain that he has plus um as you said um uh, Silas uh, Sejuani needs that. A, like a melee champion to mm -hmm. stack the passive uh, Silas is going to achieve that with Kaisa's ult, he's going to achieve that with all this utility uh, I, 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 I I agree with you that uh, since house ult is going to be probably like the most important one, just because it has that sort of ability and when you have a Braum and a Fiora that is just basically jumping up to you and you and you have like the ability to use the, the things ult um, you, you can extend the fight enough to get all that poke, get all the damage, and trying to get the kills. Yeah, and that's a good point there. I mean, yeah, the gap close up that, that the Silas, Sejuani, Noddle, I mean, everyone has gap close uh, on the side of JWU here. You're gonna have to, and that's why I like Anivia. Anivia is just has so much control, much like the Oriana. It can be very frustrating to play against can just stay pretty much oh, like three monitors away from you and still be useful. So yeah, that's the, uh, I like the, I like the Anivia pick. It's something we, I've never seen.
itself. It's going to be interesting to see, but Fiora from Dipinator, you did say that you liked that pick there. I'm liking it as well. The times he has played Fiora, he has been exceptional on it, so we will see. We will see, we will see how it pans out. Uh, you know that Fiora is going to try to get uh, win as much 1v1s, trying to get those these, um, these short fights uh, against the against the Olaf. Uh, yeah. The shorter, the better Olaf in a prolonged fight with the Conqueror, with the passive, is going to win at the end. If yeah. Fiora gets the poke, Fiora can win the lane. Uh, if Fiora doesn't, if Dipinator doesn't manage to get those these short like uh, skirmishes, uh, Olaf is going to run over Dipinator. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, old, the issue with Olaf is that it can, become, it can get out of control very quick. The Fiora has to poke him down, as you mentioned. But Olaf, honestly, okay. That champion, I, 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 I hate playing against it. I hate playing it against is, it. It is awful <laughs> playing against it, it, Olaf. It, especially an Olaf with like one or two, well, like once he gets like, because usually when you go Olaf, you, can't, you go like Hydra. You build mm -hmm. Hydra and you go into, into the Jack show. And if he goes Ghost as well. He just in the team he just runs you down and there's nothing you can do about it and it's frustrating. It is very frustrating, but especially because you, you cannot as you said you cannot do anything yeah. to slow them. Like uh, I once all of pops its ult. Um it's basically unstoppable and if he keeps getting the resets on the ult, which is like basically just auto attacking, um then then he, he can like prolongate the team fight as much as he wants. He gets all that like sustain. The the life steal that he gets from the W pass the, the, the empowered ult. It's and the tankiness and the base tankiness that he has, it's really hard to deal with an Olaf. It's really, yeah. really hard to deal with an Olaf when he gets out of hands. Another champion to deal with when they get out of hand is Samira. So we'll see. I mean the thing with Samira, I think the champion is very hit or miss. <laughs> if you can get yourself ahead in lane, then transition into some team fighting you are going to be very very impactful and very very strong but you know if you're not if you're not getting too far ahead in lane then you gotta just have to you have to farm it out but in the end i think kaisa against the samira in terms of like a, a farming and scaling battle kaisa will probably come up on top kaisa should and, be able yeah. should be able to come out on top to be honest uh, kaisa has a lot of very uh, true damage at the end in the kit um, you're gonna deal this percentage damage from the passive. Uh, you have the mobility extra from the E. You have your W like uh, to poke people from like long range, and the old that does not only like gap close uh, when you wanted those uh, team fights that are basically just chasing. Uh, it's it helps you giving you the shield. Uh, that's the ability of Kaisa. Like basically, mm -hmm. the, the whole kit of Kaisa is built around like deal as much damage as possible in the lo in the shortest amount of time exactly yeah and the yeah the side i mean kaisa yeah has a lot of kiting with her ults so that shield is very very massive i mean would you would we expect like a hybrid kaisa build i know with kaisa you can go much like varus you can build okay it's not too popular but you can go stuff like nasher's tooth you can even go zanya's on kaisa I think it's, not even it's that bad. I think it's the, only the, build, the build route that Kaisa is probably gonna take uh, will be Kraken Slayer. Uh, yeah. That's kind of a must, uh, especially if you wanna deal that extra like a uh, damage uh, of Kraken Slayer plus your passive. Uh, probably an Ashur Tooth. Uh, you wanna go hybrid sometimes, especially if the build the team is building around like uh, only anti AD or only anti AP. If they build armor or magic resist. Uh, then you get your pick, you know. But that Kraken Slayer mm -hmm. is really, really good. Um, as you said, Sonia's uh, goes really well with Kaisa because all the scaling in the passive. Um, I would prefer a Sonia's rather than a Guardian's Angel. Yeah, um, because it's, not, it's probably up. It's gonna be up more often. Yeah, it is not only gonna be up more often. It also gives him like gives her like stats in the in the range of um of uh, armor. Plus, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the stasis plus AP. Yeah. Like even if we build a full AD Kaisa, you can go for a for for a Sonia's, and then you have that extra AP that gives you that a little bit of a hybrid damage, which is real really nice to have. Exactly. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I'm actually kind of just excited to see what this Nidia can do in the mid lane because I 
whenever a, you see a champion pick that's not like you that you don't see too often, you kind of don't know how matchups go for that champion. Like Anivia versus Silas, I think Anivia is very squishy. I think Anivia has like one of the lowest starting base HPs mm-hmm. in the game. And if Silas can get onto her, especially with the Sejuani, it's not going to be pretty. But I also think that Anivia, if she can get, which I assume she'll probably go like for something like a Rod of Ages. Um, I think Rod of Ages is just the go-to item now for most mages and control mages because it's just so good. The amount of HP you get, the mana is really good. You even have healing on it as well. If Anivia is able to get ahead of the Silas, I don't think it's going to be too fun for the Silas because Anivia is like... Silas wants to like brawl you like or fight you, right? Stuff like mm-hmm. that. But if Anivia is just standing like a couple monitors away from you and clearing the wave with her ults, you know, it's not much, there's not much interaction going on there and Silas won't be able to really do much. So the Otis is going to be on Sejuani and maybe even Nautilus to try to roam up and get something done in the mid lane. Yeah, I completely agree. Silas right now has the job of like shutting down the Anivia as much as possible. Um, Anivia is going to have a, a, a really hard time, to be honest, uh, especially in the early game. Uh, her abilities just not, do not deal that much damage at the start mm-hmm. until she gets like a that first item that, as you said, is the Road of Ages. And then the Road of Ages get like a, um, charged because let's remember the Road of Ages need, needs a bit of time until like it, 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 starts, a, it starts dealing all that damage. Yeah. Um, but as you said, really, really good item. Road of Ages in uh, these control mages, it's a must. Um, the health that it brings, it's a lot of survivability. Uh, a lot of people were building crown before, uh, and then now opt for the road of ages just because Welcome even though crown gives you that uh, anti-burst at the beginning, uh, the road of ages gives you the tankiness from the health. Yeah. And also road of ages gives you damage, which is something that crown doesn't really give you. Spawn. Exactly. Yeah. But now, I like to ignite from Dipinator up against the Olaf. And now, once again, FWU here going for a little invade here. But there is a ward from Florida Tech to spot out this invade, so they know that this is happening. Can they maybe collapse on them? But Olaf level 1 is a champion you do not want to mess with. Almost similar, very similar to Darius. He will run you down with Ghost at level 1 with his Qs. Picking up his axes, he'll be able to... Uh, just keep resetting the cooldown and chase you down, so... I like the invade idea with the Nautilus as well. And maybe I'll try to take away the red buff from the Zell, but... Yeah, they're just gonna back away, and... What else am I liking out of here? I mean, Arcing Comet from Fungus Dungus, and both junglers here are gonna start out on their bot sides. The other thing I like about Braum is that he gives you such a, a really good leash with that stun. It's actually, I think, very underrated. It is, stun. it is. That, it's it's not damage. only a stun, but it deals like an extra damage on top. So, mm-hmm. uh, as you as you see, reset already already finished the blue, already finished the raid, and it's already moving to the cogs. Um, yeah. And and uh, and Scalzi is, is barely finishing the blue. Yeah, and rewind time. Just try to do a little whole trade there on Fungus Dungus, and he was not able to hit the second chain. I think Fungus Langa started Q, and Rewind Time is already half HP, but he has a couple potions, so he'll be chilling. Pop this first one there, and look, this is what you're talking about. Dipbaiter just poking him down, even with the Scourge. Ooh, good Nautilus with lands onto Jono, but trading back, Instinct lands the Q, and look, Dipbaiter, so much poke, and I think, yeah, the poke idea is right, honestly, when you have gr- you have Grasp and you have Scourge. I think Dipbaiter also has Scourge as well. Jono, that was a crucial dodge there on the Nautilus hook. If he had not dodged that, you would probably died. Another thing I just saw, Samira has Ignite. She has no like heal or cleanse. She has no anything. heal. Uh, I, it, to be honest, the the Ignite Samira, it's it works sometimes. Uh, it, it all depends on the matchup. I don't think it's gonna be that necessary in this matchup because uh, Kaisa is gonna explode uh, oh if Jonah doesn't have the shield up. Uh, let's remember, Brown is not a really really good tank. Uh, yeah. in the early game. Oh, wait a minute. Silas here. Rewind time. He's being slowed down. He's gonna try to flash away. Reset gonna flash after him. Gets the first blood. I okay. reset with that Sing Sao. Yeah. Getting all those kills yeah. in early game. As, same as last game. Uh, helping the, the, the mid lane get like as much advantage as possible. And now it's rewind time. Gets forced to waste the flash and the TP. Yeah. Oh, that hook actually landed? 
That's interesting there, but Jono, see, look what I'm talking about, Braum. You want the chance, the Nautilus goes in, but loses the trade because Braum just autos them. And the Kai'Sa with the stun, and meanwhile, Dipnator here, gonna be able to dodge away from this Sejuani gank. Dipnator's been doing really well in the top lane here. That's how I kind of want to how you play this matchup as Fiora. You take Grasp. I think he also has Scorch as well. And he, whenever he has his Grasp up, he's just queuing in. And since Fiora's Q uh, prioritizes champions, right? It's just mm -hmm. poking down this Olaf. But Olaf has the Doran shield, so he's going to stand up a bit. And yeah, reset already. But then Gank in the mid lane is going to give himself and his mid laner a advantage. Fungus Fungus was able to reset, and now he has his Cure of the Goddess, which is going to help him out in lane a lot with mana. Meanwhile here, Hofu, oh wait, oh running away here. He's going to force to flash and ghost away. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Silas going to land the chains on the Fungus Fungus, but Page Galzy is a little bit out of range. Can't do anything about that. And reset in the mid lane and in the top lane doing so much. But I think Dipater also flash ignited. Don't know. Was that from the after the gank? After the camera panned away? I can't remember. Um... DP Nader flash ignited uh, during the gank. Okay. Um, yeah. So Ho Ho uh, wastes the, the the ghost and the flash uh, trying to run away, um, and he manages to run away, which is really really good. Uh, but at the same time, he doesn't have this uh, this extra ability. You know, he doesn't have TP. Uh, he doesn't have uh, the the ghost now, and it's it's gonna be really really hard to maintain this tempo, especially because reset is behind him. Yeah, exactly. Joe now. Stun lands, or suddenly gets blocked onto Delo here, and Delo is taking so much damage from the Kai'Sa Braum. And the thing there is that Nautilus goes in, Braum puts his shield up, and the Samira can't really do anything. She can't really follow up, and I think, yeah, Scalzi's gonna get caught here by this ward. Trying to become a little alcove gamer, but Florida Tech, they see the Sejuani. And, I mean... Reset is gonna come straight out of the base and try to do something about this, and Delo gonna miss the hook. Well, not miss, but... A little bit out of range there. Miss Galzy. Gonna reset. I mean, this feels bad when you're playing this 20, though. Like, you, the, you don't know that the enemy team knows you're there, and <laughs> you're kind of just sitting there waiting for something to happen, but Florida Tech knows you're there. And yeah, Florida Tech, they're gonna play super safe in the ball lane. Scalzi, you're gonna get the reset. But Scalzi wastes a lot of time in the ball lane. Yeah. Uh, trying to get that gank at least. Uh, 20 seconds, and that for a jungler losing all that tempo, it's it's kind of bad. Now, yeah, now, you... now, reset gets gets the advantage. Uh, yeah, look, you're coming in, coming mid lane through the river. Reset is here though. He's gonna be able to evade this gank here. Delo gonna get stunned up by the Anivia. Exhaust is dropped onto reset. He's gonna get knocked up as well, like Knight as well. The Silas is sick, so he's gonna grab a reset's ult and get the kill. And you know the Nautilus and the Samira roaming up from the bot lane. Trying to get something done in the mid lane, trying to kill Fungus Dungus. Reset was there to counter gank, but he goes in, but the Silas has the Yuzin's out ult. He's able to pick up the kill for himself. I, I, I think Reset thought it, it, only Delo was going to be there, but at the end of the day, it's Delo and, and Lalo Day uh, getting into the, in, from the river the, into mid lane. And when he realizes it's too late. Yeah, it's a bit too late for him. <laughs> it was a bit too late when he realized it was too late, <laughs> but yeah. Scalzi has just been, you know, he's been showing up to lanes and trying to get something done, but Florida Tech, their top lane and their bot lane have been dodging from Sijuani ganks, and she will retreat back to her jungle, grab the camps, and it looks like reset here. I mean, it's a wind dragon. Will he look to start it up? He's doing the crab right now. And it seems as if... Everything is just chill right now. Everyone's chilling. Just went back to base, bought some items. Reset probably waiting for to get for a um, fungus dungus and instinct to get a prior in bot and mid, uh, just so he can get that dragon. But we see the rotation from its rewind time. Yeah, just to get that war down. Ooh, hook on to Jono. Jono gonna block a lot of the damage from the Samira with it. Yellow almost gets stunned up there. Jono's still going to be taking down to about 1 3 HP here. Now look, the Nivea being a nuisance against the Silas. Silas, though, has a lot of sustain in the extended fight with his healing. And, you know, fighting in the top lane has slowed down a bit after Ho-Ho has got the reset. He's got his Vampiric Scepter. Vampiric Scepter, sorry. He's going to be 
healing up, sustaining. And looks like JW here, they have four members, or not four members, but posturing towards the dragon a little bit. I think they know that reset is top lane. Yeah, they do know. Or they, actually, no, they don't. He was trying to go over the wall with the blast cone, but there is a pink ward there, so Sijuani could start up the wind dragon if she wants. And we see Floritech again prioritizing uh, the Reef Herald to that first mm -hmm. dragon. Um, to be honest, the Reef Herald uh, um, priority is really, really good uh, just because you have uh, those plates that gives you like a ton of gold to, to, to one of your lanes that you can funnel up. You you, you want to go uh, with Fungus Dungus, you can give him like a small advantage. It's basically three guaranteed plates. Uh, and if you have the push on the lane, you could even like mean a tower. And now we see JWU going for that Drake again. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as I said, Reset is doing the Reef Herald. Yeah, I think Floor Tech are happy with trading this, to be honest. It is just a Wind Dragon. Jono <laughs> gonna try to get that steal with his ult. And in the mid lane, this Anivia is harassing the Silas. Nautilus coming up to try to do something. Meanwhile, Jono and his finds his Galzi in the river. Now look, Fungus Dungus on the Anivia is just... <laughs> he's just harassing them in a one versus two situation. The damage from the Anivia. Let me say yeah. that. Yeah, wait a minute. Silas already done. He's gonna flash back in. It's the chain. He's gonna go. He's gonna actually miss this. It's 20 ult is here though. Fungus Fungus is gonna go down into the egg and he will drop in the end. Scout's gonna give up the kill. You on the top lane. Divinator, can he get the last vital onto the Olaf? Olaf is 1 HP. I think he used to also try to flash in here. on the bot lane. He'll goes down to save Jono. Jono is 1 HP. Lolule has. Or oh, sorry, not Lolule. Samira here has. Did she have the ult up? I think she was the. Uh, she, she was getting the stacks for the ult and yeah. she doesn't manage to get the stacks up for the ult. It wastes yeah. a flash, wastes ignite and doesn't get the kill at the end. The the lane of Flora Tech is, is it has a it has a summoner's advantage with only the the heal and the exhaust being being um being used. Uh now I think Lola Day should be an easy target for reset. Uh if reset wants to co come by like uh, the bot lane and just basically pick up the kill. Yep. The Samira, especially with Ignite as well, I mean, when you're going for it with Ignite, you try to get a lot of pressure in the mid lane, and now Kai'Sa has the man immune, or the, the Muramana first, building towards the man immune, which is very interesting, something we did not expect to happen. Usually Kai'Sa nowadays wants to get that extra, uh, not the mana, but the passive that the mid America gets, just because the rockets mm -hmm. from the Q uh, yeah. are, uh, do, like, uh, do deal the damage of the mirror mana. Yeah, yeah, it's so much extra damage. <laughs> Reset. Maybe going here, he might be, he's just gonna go in. Gonna take a decent amount of damage though from this Olaf. Look at and those axes. Yeah, they do so much damage. Reset here. Trying to help out this top laner, help out Dipinator. You know, in this game, GWU looking a lot more stable in the early game compared to the last game. Silas has his completed Everfrost, meanwhile Jono. Gonna get knocked up, gonna get... Uh, yeah, from the Nautilus, or sorry, from the Samira, the Samira follow-up. And the damage from ho -Ho. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, Olaf's E is true damage. Yeah. <laughs> nice one, right? Nice one, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, honestly, that champion is kind of unfun, just disgusting to play against. Anyways, I'm gonna go back. This is Juwani. Has completed the, um, Radiant Virtue. And... Oof, look at the, look at the hook from Marilus. Yeah. The hook from Nautilus actually hit there, and Dello, he has no flash. He can get chased down here by the Kai'Sa killer instinct. And that's going to be a kill for instinct. Oh, wait. I oh. just realized. <laughs> killer instinct in rewind time. He's going to try to go on to Fungus Fungus here. He might be able to get the kill. Fungus Fungus is forced to flash away, and yeah, Fungus Fungus flash is burned here. Silas has his spells back up, and he's going to be able to get the kill onto Fungus Fungus. Fungus Fungus goes down in the mid lane versus Silas. Reset and drop the hill here. Some plates going for instinct. Get some gold funnel into him and rewind in time. He's gonna be grabbing. I think he got a plate, or he got two plates there in the mid lane. Meanwhile, oh, has to be careful here. Dipinger has a lot of damage already gone onto him. Beware, the, 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 the lower uh, Olaf gets, the more damage he deals. Yep. But yeah, but, but uh, Dipinger okay. just ignites him and gets away with the kill. Ho Ho was yeah. not able to do anything. Fiora's Q is if you hit it on the champion, the cooldown. Wait, is it? Champion? If you hit it on the champion, or if you hit it on the vital, the cooldown gets reduced. Uh, I think, I think it's, it's the vital. Yeah, but so then why was the Q such low cooldown? 
I think it's only five seconds right now. No, it's if it's v it's v if it's Fjord strikes a champion, it gets reduced. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah no, an enemy, an enemy, not even a champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually insane. Like the Fjord Q is such low cooldown. <laughs> it's but yeah. Kind of it's hard kind to of fight crazy. against a Fiora. The, the perfect duel is against the champion with probably the most reliability in the game that it's Olaf, and we see Olaf lo loses. Oh, meanwhile, a little fight in the mid lane here. Dello gonna get sunned up here. We want a time. Has the Braum ult. The Nivea wall is gonna cut off Dello's escape. Maybe they're gonna get the kill. Jonah will grab the kill. And Dello finds himself dead in the mid lane. Dragon coming up here in less than a minute. 20 seconds here on this Ocean Dragon. Which team is looking to pick it up? Reset. Not as much of a lead as he had in the last game, but still very, very strong. And he has the Mercury Treads, which are going to help him a lot. And he's going to actually find Rewind of Time here. Can he get the knockup here? And the Anivia Wall is going to slow down. Rewind of Time's reset. Rewind of Time. Can he use the Braum ult onto Fungus Dungus? But the Anivia just has so much potential to set up ganks and to follow up on ganks. Meanwhile, here, Instinct going to be caught up here by this Juani. So much damage up from the Sage Juani himself. Instinct for the flash away. Heal as well. Olaf is behind him, though. The Instinct. Ult goes Look down at the killer instinct! instinct. He's gonna live from it as well. Olaf is in the fight. Instinct actually went down to the ignite. Reset gonna go down here. The Olaf is CC immune chasing down. Remember, if he keeps autoing, he's gonna be continue to be CC immune, and it's gonna be a double kill for Olaf. For some reason, he is still CC immune. This is very cool, Riot Games, and he's gonna go into the tower. And are they gonna finish him off? A triple kill for the Olaf. Now, okay, honestly, that is that's unfair. That is, uh, that's you give the Olaf the, the, the red buff plus the ultimate, it's it's yeah it's really hard to find it again. And we saw how how Instinct was able to use that killer instinct again, haha. <laughs> okay. Uh, to to, to no run way. away the shield plus the, the repositioning that that the, the ult um that Kaisa's ult provides. It's really, yeah. really good. And he survives. He barely he survives. Died. He died, he died. He really died? Really. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, we want, oh, it's, that was a 1 HP dragon! The dragon is 1 HP and Reset is gonna get, oh, the Samira and Instinct and Reset are gonna go down here as well and... Dragon was 1 HP! No! Yeah, I think the Samira Ignite is what ended up killing up Instinct in the fight and honestly, the Olaf there... It popped off, I mean, Florida Tech had used everything and Ha, or Ho, sorry, got a... A good flank there and was able to kill them all. And meanwhile, here's gonna run exactly just flash on Fungus Dongus, and there's nothing Fungus Dongus can do about it. Oh, just flashes onto it completely with, with no counterplay whatsoever, and is gonna grab himself another kill in the mid lane. You know, you know the meme of a uh, 200 years that Aphelios has? Yes, yes. These, That's these, a these Olaf is like something similar, you know? Yeah, it's like 3,000 years though. Yeah, it's. <laughs> it's it's wild how many how what look at look at Olaf he he's able to do ho ho is able to do whatever he wants he just yeah he just flash into the Anivia there was no counterplay Anivia can't do anything yeah and uh, the only way to really kill Olaf is you kind of have to just burst him because when Olaf ults he sheds like all of his CC or like all of his or like not sheds but like. Reduces, he yeah. Of, yeah, his armor and magic resistance, so that's your time to try to kill him. But we have an Olaf jumping in as well, and now Samira, who has three kills, has the completed shield bow, building towards the collector next. And the, when you have the, both of those jumping in. The good news now for I think is Fungus Dungus finish Leandris. Yeah. Uh, Leandris is gonna be able to shed some of the some of the healing that Olaf has. It's not gonna be a lot. Because uh Olaf has Basically, 90% of his attack with his low HP are, are, are gonna kill him. Plus, he has that that uh, that Hydra. Yeah. Um, if if they are able to poke him uh, with the um, with, with Anivia's ult plus the Qs uh, plus a uh, Depinator's Ignite, it's gonna be a relatively decent target to hit. Oh, I think Fungus Dungus is in here. He's gonna flash away. He's gonna try to kite. That's a good dodge there from Sejuani, and Risa is here to fight. But the 
Precision's out, Wolf, Precision's out, Wolf, and he goes back in. Rewind time is gonna go down to reset. The Nautilus is here, though. Florida Tech, oh, the Sejuani Glacial Prince is gonna go down. Yellow gonna flash in, gonna hook up reset. Reset is gonna go down here. Funding Stungus is trying to live here. The Olaf going back in, he is CC immune. Can Dipinor do anything about it? Dipinor gonna grab the kill, gonna get the shutdown onto the Olaf. It's Cali who's running for his life. It's Cali has no flash, but the Blast Cone is here. The Super Blast Cone is gonna, gonna get him away. And in the end, a two for two. But Dipnator gets the shutdown on Olaf, so this Fiora now looking very, very strong. Um, I think Dipinator basically got a, a massive shutdown. I think it was 700 yeah. gold right now. Funneled. Oof. We see yeah. Jono wasting the world to trying to save the turret, but at the end of the day, uh, Lola Day is able to just use Samira's uh, E to to yeah. to block it. I think it's it, Samir's W, the, the win wall. It's the, the block. Yeah, it, it is, is double, w. yeah. Okay. It's all good, though. They get the tower. And Dipnator now has the completed hole breaker, so he is not looking to fight. He is looking... I mean, I actually like it, though. In the side lane versus Olaf, it's going to help you out a lot in those 1v1s against the Olaf, so... Yes, I'm actually surprised as... to level up. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, he has been able, he hasn't been able to engage in all the fights that Olaf, Olaf has. Uh, he's been able to get that solo farm, and that's why we see like a 30, uh, 30 minions, a 30 CS advantage uh, over the Olaf. Yes, uh, now he has, we see that the, this Fiora, which is able to split push a lot. Again, Fiora is really good with split push because um, uh, basically or her, or most of her abilities can hit on turrets. Yeah. Um, so... Basically, we're gonna, we're gonna see a Fiora that is gonna shred turrets. Exactly, yeah, the Divine Sunder as well. The Qs, the E's. He's gonna be doing so much here. And I think Reset drops the hill into mid lane, gonna grab that mid lane tower. Florida Tech, and Dragon is coming up here. Chemtech Soul. Or not, well, it's gonna be Chemtech Soul, but it's gonna be the first Chemtech Dragon coming up here 30 seconds. Dipnator, though, I don't think he's interested in fighting. He is interesting. Or, sorry, he's not interested in, he's not interested in team fighting. He's interested in. Trying to kill this Olaf in the side lane, and now if if Divinator is able to play it well and kite out the Olaf a bit, he can do something. He can do you know. But he, look he at Fred Tech try to sneak yeah. the dragon. They're trying to sneak Baron here now. They're trying to do exactly what JWU trying to do what JWU did last game, but they have the Anivia coming up as well. Anivia can shred the Baron with the Andres, and they're just gonna sneak this. The Sejuani has an inkling that this might be happening, though she is running up. Try to do something about this Jono. There's gonna be a Florida Tech in the end. They're gonna get the Baron for free, and they're also gonna be find the Sejuani here. Oh, this the Anivia wall is not able to block Sejuani's escape, but Florida Tech, they're gonna get a Baron for themselves, and Sejuani just trying to stop the resets here, but she might have killed herself by doing that. Yeah, reset's gonna jump in as well. Instinct is oh, gonna go in with the killer instinct, but he's by himself. The Olaf is there. He's just trying to kind of here. Olaf gonna go in. Instinct with a W flash. Gonna grab the kill. Does Florida Tech want to fight this though? The Olaf is gonna go all the way. Hey, he's alive! How is he alive? He's alive! The Nivia wall, I think, was like glitched there or something, but I, I don't know what happened. But Dipinator is gonna go back in with the grand challenge rewind time, forced to use the Zinzao ult that he stole, and. My I question no is how is Instinct alive? How yeah, is he able know. to survive all that, all the damage? All Olaf, Olaf was basically shredding every, everyone's HP. They are, they, are, they are barely able to kill him, and then the instinct survives. It's, it, it is yeah. not worth it for the, for the side of JWU. I mean, they try to punish Florida Tech over, you know, overstepping there, but Florida Tech, you know, they're winning, they win that fight. And, I mean, I was, I thought instinct was crazy when he ulted in there, because I, I saw him and Sejuani and Olaf. Sejuani, Olaf versus an ADC. Guess who wins? No, guess who I'm, I'm, wins? <laughs> guess who wins? I know, but Instinct, that was some good kiting in as well. That W flash, the AP Kaisa, the W, the like, AP especially since it was the last, since it was like last, it was like the last proc of Kaisa's passive. It dealt a lot of damage and it was able in the end to take down the Sejuani. And I don't know how Instinct lived there, to be honest. The Olaf was on, was on him, but yeah. But the one thing that JW do, do have now is it's kind of going to be up to the Samira now. Samira. Does have two level advantage over Instinct. They also have the Chemtech. They're also at Chemtech Soul Point here in Fungus Fungus. I think he's gonna try to trap the Olaf. Okay, never mind. The Olaf's gonna run away, and Fungus Fungus has the completed Seraphs now. Olaf has his Jack shows, and 
I like the Cosmic Drive from Silas, though. Cosmic Drive, I think, is super underrated. It got buffed recently. It is, I think... That extra mobility the that the Cosmic Drive gives you. Yeah, and, and AP. AP. Yes, exactly. I think when you have it proc, it's like 130 AP. It's uh, pretty good. I think good. I tried to Deepinator. Yeah, flashing away. He's actually going to block the Nautilus Q. And here we go. Lisa is coming in. TP from Fungus Fungus. Fungus Fungus can get an ult off here. Gonna land the Q onto the Samira. Samira taking down so low. Samira, but look at the damage. Low. Look at the damage. Yeah. The, the, the Anemia is keeping. Yeah. She's not even in the fight and she's dealing so much damage. <laughs> they're sitting in the Anivia ult and they're just gonna get shredded by it. Dipnator was able to kite out the Olaf in that fight as well and... Dipnator, you know, it seemed as if he was gonna get caught out there but... Reset was there and a good TP from Fungus Dungus, and I think Dipnator played that super well, you know. Stalling out JW do, JW's damage, and the Samira was not able to do much. I mean, this is why I think <laughs> Anivia is so oppressive when ahead. It's just so much CC and utility and damage as well. You saw in that fight, you know. Basically, the pool of death. That is what Anivia's ult there was. Hey, they, hey, Anivia's, Anivia's ultimate plus uh, the Leandris are uh, uh, now they, they yeah. fully finish uh, Archangel stuff. Uh, it's. It's a shredding the side of a JWU, especially you don't have a true tank. They are not building yeah. again. They are not building magic resistance. All the yeah. damage is coming from Fungus Dungus. Like none of the none of the champs, most of the champs do not have that much that extra magic resistance. Uh, the only ones that that have is the is the the, the Olaf in in small quantities and the uh, uh, and the and Sichuani. but it's not enough. If, if, it's not if, enough. Yeah. If you can not, if you can not survive, as you said, the pool of death, that, that pool of death, <laughs> Anivia, Anivia is gonna shred your ex, your, your HP. Yep. Another thing here is that, ooh, reset here, ooh, with that hook. Dello had waited a little second here, but reset gonna take that, try to go back in and look, the Zin Zhao poking out this Nautilus a lot. Wait a minute, Instinct over the wall, might get caught, the kill of Instinct goes down as well, rewind time, getting caught up to the side, wall goes down as well, Fungus Fungus, hiding away from the Samira. Reset gonna land the W back onto the Samira. Samira's gonna get knocked up inside this, uh, the, sorry, the individual as well. Gonna get down the Inferno trigger, but Instinct hiding away from the Sijuani. Instinct. The Braum is doing so much here to hide away from the Sijuani, and I think on the other side, Dipnator was able to chase down the Silas and get the kill onto the Silas, and Dipnator gonna get the, probably gonna just one-shot that tower. And Florida Tech, I think, are going to be able to grab themselves this dragon, the mid tower, that bot tower, and they're just going to explode the game from here. They have pretty much, they're just ahead of everyone right now on the side, like in terms of like lane versus lane. Everyone on the side of Florida Tech is ahead, and now Olaf building towards the Mob Mamordius. Going to get himself a lot of magic resist against that, and now Dipnator, I mean, with the... He has the Hole Breaker here, so he's going to be able to survive for a lot. He's going to get oh, almost all the idols off instantly. Going to be able to bring down the Olaf as well. Is he able to live? No, he is not. And honestly, okay, that's probably the best you can do in that situation. That is probably the, the best you can do in this situation. Yeah. He manages to get the 1v1, the, the 1v2. He gets the kill on the Olaf, and at the end of the day, he, he dies. But uh, he's able to give Reset the enough time to get uh, the, the Kentek Dragon. Um, yeah. As you said, most of adva advantages are now on the side of Florida Tech. We saw that Samir had a small advantage at the beginning, uh, like in the mid game, uh, over Kaisa. But now the Kaisa is trading a lot of people. We see the, the full mm -hmm. full stack uh, Maramune plus uh, the Nashor Stud and the Ludens Echo, and and now Kaisa building towards boots. We didn't we didn't have a Kaisa with boots up until <laughs> now, and yeah, and now I this Kaisa yeah. with all this attack speed. Plus the proking of, of the passive, plus those uh, those Ws that are gonna absolutely destroy the enemy team. It's it's scary. It's, it's scary. And uh, as you saw in the fight in the river, Kaisa was able to survive thanks to the ult. Now now Kaisa's ult, I think, is a really really low cooldown at, at, at level 11. Yeah, and also her ult Look. shield scaled with ability power as well. So lots of shielding. And look, the Anivia is gonna stun up the the Olaf Olaf force to go into this. It's Jono gonna jump into the fight. He's taking up so much damage. Jono's gonna go down into your dip meter. Maybe still look for a point. We want a time is inside the fight. Meanwhile, Instinct is taken down by the Olaf. Fungus Fungus trying to kite. We want time is on Fungus Fungus. Fungus Fungus flashing away. Meanwhile, on the other side, dip meter is fighting. One versus two here. Gonna be now be a one versus three. Gonna take down. Meanwhile, Fungus Fungus on the other side of the fight. He's gonna take down the Silas. Can he heal in time? 
ho ho it was actually i think he was like a couple ticks away from dying to the yandries and dipinator wait Dip Anthony, be careful dipinator's in the base dipinator is going he's going, going the for base. the end he's gonna do so much damage to these towers he has this demolish still up he's gonna get this he's gonna get both towers here okay dipinator very smart there knowing his i mean he was the last one alive there and this fight he's gonna run away and i mean if the smear walks up dipinator will happily take that fight Gonna go back in. Dimator gonna get the Dimitri up as well. Oh, the last parry. That was a very good ignite there from the Samira from Lalole. For Lalole, sorry. But Lalo at the Day. end of the day, Foyate gets gets a small yeah. advantage getting getting those uh, Nexus turrets. It's open Nexus. It's open Nexus. It's open Nexus, and they don't have any more turrets. JW doesn't have any turrets up. Yeah, JW. JW no, they only have inhibitors and the Nexus. The next team fight, if Dipinator is able to get a backdoor. It's gonna yeah. be really, really easy for Fire Tech to win. Now, 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 what what they should be looking for is abilities to flank. Now, yeah. th they just need to to prolong the, the fight as much as possible, prevent those backs from from the side of JWU, and then the Pinero just gets the flank, gets the, gets the backdoor, and basically wins the game. Yep, Baron here on the cards for JWU here. Samira now has the completed Infinity Edge. Samira is three levels up on the Kaizen. Look, Dipnator is heading straight towards the bot side. Does not want to have to do anything with that fight up towards the Baron. And I think Florida Tech, they're just going to try to do a little... Are they trying to fight? I think Dip Reset just flashed out. Instinct. Jono are getting a little bit low. And now, yeah, free Baron for the side of JW. Going to grab that one for free. Chemtech Soul as well coming up here in two minutes. And I mean, the thing is, you saw in that fight the power of Olaf, Sejuani, like just all five just pure diving in champions. There's nothing that, I mean, Fungus Song has tried his hardest to uh, to kite out. He even got the kill onto the Silas as he was chased down, but in the end, even with the egg, he was not able to live. Uh, uh, and now we see a, a more a more matchup game. We are in the late late yeah. game right now. The gold advantages is not gonna matter that much. It's mm -hmm. more how you play the team fights. And and we saw last team fight that we had before before this this Byron team fight. Um, for your take w was not able to to execute it uh, to execute it well. And then they they were the ones that that, that basically lost the more players. And if it wasn't for the Pinator, they wouldn't have gotten the, that the, that extra advantage. Exactly, yeah, and I mean, it's going to be all on Dipinator, to be honest, like, he is very, very strong here, he has, well, I mean, he's building towards the Death Dance next, but, actually, I think the Olaf does have a decent chance, or has a very small chance of beating him, if he plays it correctly in the sign lane, but I think Olaf here, yeah, go ahead. If Olaf plays it, as you said, really well, and uh, tries to evade, like, as much as possible, um, yeah. the, 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 the vitals, uh, wait, wait, the Dipinator, going for back door, I think. Yeah, and I think Ho Ho realizes it as well because Fiora is not showing up to the team fight. Wait, no, Ho Ho has not realized it yet. Wait, he is. He has. Wait. Olaf is just hovering in mid lane looking for something. And I think Dipnator is waiting for confirmation to see all the numbers and he's going to go onto it. Look, he's going for it. But look, they have the Baron resets to, you know, stop or to, to go back fast. And look, Florida Tech are trying to stop it, but the Samira was able to back. It's going to be Dipnator versus three numbers. I don't think he's going to do it. He's going to have to run away here. He's going to force it before the away. But now, since everyone back to try to stop the Olaf, Florida Tech. Going to press the issue on the other side. You're going to be killing the Sejuani, and now Florida Tech. And the Pinator survives. Yeah, that's really well played from the side of Florida Tech. They lure out, they force the backs. The Pinator forces the backs from everyone. And, you know, Florida Tech on the other side, as four, are going to stop the resets. They stop some of the resets, they don't really get some kills, and they're going to get the Chemtech Dragon and stall out Chemtech Soul away from JWU. You And once again, I mean, it's it's Pinator's play that gets Florida Tech going in here. Yeah. Silas is actually by himself. There's actually he's, he's, Silas is going to get ulted up here by the Fjord. The Grand goes down. Rooted as well. And actually, good ult there from, uh, from Reset. Going to knock the Olaf back. And the Olaf can't do anything. He is stunned up with no ult. And Florida Tech, despite JWU having the Baron, they're pushing as five and looking to end this game. I mean, it's open Nexus to Samira. Maybe he has to look for something here. But Samira has no cleanse. She's stunned up. And she will go down. And meanwhile, Divaner is just going to fight them. And I mean, it, it is a five versus three here. The, the Nivea wall is the very, very large. a lot, a lot of damage. Yeah. And, and if it wasn't for him, I think this game would have been really, really hard for Florida Tech. He's able to get the best of all of. Koho was need, needed to cover that flank from Deepinator, and 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 his doubts 
um, yeah. basically uh, cause Deep Inner to be able to get into the base, get, get, get that in here, uh, uh, make all of you result, and then get out. I mean, you saw there, Hoho was hovering a bit in the mid lane as well, because mm -hmm. he was just, he was laning against, uh, against Deep Inner on top side, and then he reset and tried to go to help out his team at the dragon fight. But Dipinator, you know, he was patient, he waited, and he was able to pull three members towards him, and then Florida Tech on the other side of the map were able to get the kill. Oh, and... and yeah, Tech got that. a perfect... Florida Tech got a perfect 8-0 in the NC... NECC. NECC. Yeah, and I think they got... Florida Tech are now number one seed for an NECC right now, which is amazing. Amazing, amazing. amazing. Yeah. Qualifying for yeah. playoffs. Yep. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's, yeah, it's going to be great. Director, yeah, but in that game, I mean, JWU, they were... They were know, ahead. They were ahead. Yeah, they were ahead. So Olaf was looking very, very, you know, very, very strong in the, in the, in the game, but Dipinator decides, I'm just going to split push. And off of that, you know, Florida Tech, they win the game. And I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say. That was like... That was that a pretty was, close game, though. Th that was a pretty close game, but Florida Tech manages to exploit their advantages, manages to 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 control uh, the mid game, because all the chaos that starts to happen uh, to JWU is when um, Anivia gets into this mid game and manages to get uh, the ult in, in all the team fights. Uh, we saw in the team fight in the top lane uh, where Anivia was able to lay uh, Fungus Dungus, lay the ultimate of Anivia. Everybody was fighting in the ultimate. Shredding all their HP away, and then Anivia Fungus Dungus did, did not get any damage into in, into into his champ. Yeah, and I mean, I like the Anivia there though. The Anivia was doing a lot of damage in the fights, and especially in that one fight in top side, they were able to almost ace them. So I like the the. I still think that you know, the Silas was did punish the 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 Anivia a lot. So I like that from them as well, but yeah, these games were really fun to cast, and thank you Juan as well for joining me today to cast this, and thank you everyone for uh, for tuning in, but I think it's going to be wraps for us. I don't know when the next game is, but I think the next game is going to be a Teemo Cup game, um, probably this weekend or something like that. Don't quote me on that though, but yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you for having me here. Um, whenever you need, a, um, it, it's really <laughs> yeah. fun to cast League. Um, but yeah, proud and impressed, impressed of Florida Tech's uh, ability to like come back from the game and, you know, it was yep. a good game. It was a good series. It was a good game. Yep. Once again, thank you, everyone. Enjoy your rest of your, uh, your Wednesday nights. And uh, yeah, thanks, everyone.